Hello and welcome. It's 10 a.m. on Wednesday, the 3rd of September. You're tuned in to our mid-morning newscast here on Aridang TV. It's great to have you with us. I'm Mark Broom. Let's take a look at what's making the headlines. Islamic State releases a video purporting to show the beheading of American journalist Stephen Sotlov. It says the murder is retaliation for the Obama administration's continued airstrikes in Iraq. U.S. President Barack Obama is on his way to Estonia, where he will try to reassure Baltic states rattled by Russia's apparent incursion into Ukraine. Plus, government ministers here in Korea are presenting their plans for tackling excessive regulations in specific industries as President Park and hae hosts a second regulatory reform meeting at the presidential office. Our top story this morning, another American journalist has been murdered by Islamic State militants. The video released a few hours ago purports to show the beheading of Stephen Sotlov in yet another dramatic escalation in the group's battle with the West. The extremist group warns that another hostage shown in the video, who is said to be British, will suffer the same gruesome fate unless Washington stops launching airstrikes in Iraq. Uh, Huang Sangi starts us off. It's titled A Second Message to America, and it's a message that's just as brutal as the first. The video shows another American hostage dressed in an orange jumpsuit on his knees next to a masked man dressed in black and holding a knife. The beheading of U.S. journalist Stephen Sotloff was posted online Tuesday by the Islamic State with a warning to President Obama to halt airstrikes in Iraq. So just as your missiles continue to strike our people, our knife will continue to strike the necks of your people. The masked man's voice is the same, an apparently British voice, as the world heard on the video of James Foley's murder a fortnight ago. Mr. Sotloff, a 31-year-old freelance journalist from Miami, disappeared while reporting from Syria in August last year. But his family had kept the news secret, fearing harm to him if they went public. Last week, Mr. Sotloff's mother issued a video appeal, pleading with the militants to spare her son. As a mother, I ask your justice to be merciful and not punish my son for matters he has no control over. In Washington, the White House is still verifying the authenticity of the video. But uh, State Department those, spokesperson uh, Jen Psaki said, quote, if the video is genuine, we're sickened by this brutal act. The masked man in the latest video also shows who he claims to be a British national, identified on screen as David Haynes, and makes it clear he is also now at risk. Hwang Sang-hee, Arirang News. Now, in the rest of the day's news, the U.S. government is, says that it's doing all it can to secure the release of three American nationals detained in North Korea. Speaking to CNN on Tuesday, State Department spokesperson Jen Psaki said the U.S. was looking into diverse options to help them, uh, such as dispatching a special uh, envoy. Now, she said that North Korea refused Washington's uh, earlier Ukraine, proposal to send, send Robert King the U.S. Special Envoy for North Korean Human Rights to Pyongyang. White House Press Secretary Josh Ernest also said on Tuesday that the three men's safe release was at the top of the administration's agenda. Earlier this week, Kenneth Bay, Matthew Todd Miller and Jeffrey Edward Fowle each granted a five-minute interview with CNN in which they all pleaded for the U.S. government to do more to help them. North Korea held a secret meeting with Japan in Kuala Lumpur last month to discuss the issue of Japanese nationals who were abducted by North Korean agents in the 1970s and 80s. Citing diplomatic sources, Japan's Kyodo News Agency reported on Tuesday that a senior North Korean official met with Japan's top diplomat for Asian affairs, Junichi Ihara, in the Malaysian capital on August 21st. But little progress was apparently made during their secret contact. The report said Pyongyang did not provide any new information on the abductees, but did demand Tokyo lift additional sanctions in exchange uh, for the first report on its investigation into the issue. The two sides failed to fix the exact date for the release of the report, which was initially expected to come out in the second week of September. 
Now, North Korea will begin sending its athletes competing in the upcoming Asian uh, Games in Incheon to South Korea starting next Thursday. Seoul's Unification Ministry says the North sent a letter via the Inter-Korean hotline on Tuesday. This outlining detailed plans for its participation in the sporting event. It said the first group of North Korea's 273 member delegation will arrive on September 11th. The delegation will be divided into six groups that will fly to the south using a route that passes over the West Sea. The Asian Games officially kick off on September 19th in the South Korean port city of Incheon. Time now for a look through some of the other international headlines we're following on this Wednesday morning. For that, we turn to our Eunice Kim standing by at the News Centre. Good morning, Eunice. And good morning to you, Mark. Tensions are rising by the day over this Ukraine crisis now, and uh, some private comments made by Russian President Vladimir Putin is definitely adding a new dimension to this already very serious crisis. That's right, Mark. President Putin had told the outgoing European Commission President Jose Manuel Barroso that his forces could conquer Ukraine's capital in two weeks upon his order. Now, this bravado was said in a private phone conversation that was leaked and published by Italian newspaper La Repubblica. The Kremlin has not denied the comments, but did say it was widely taken out of context. Russia, of course, on the record, has denied reports of Russian troops in Ukraine. This as world leaders are beginning to arrive in Wales, where a NATO summit is to begin on Thursday, during which they are expected to approve the creation of a rapid response force to counter Moscow. U.S. President Barack Obama is also on his way there via Estonia, where he will try to reassure Baltic states rattled by Russia's apparent incursion into Ukraine. Britain's parliament has rejected Beijing's calls to stop an inquiry that would inspect Hong Kong's progress toward democracy. Britain had handed Hong Kong back to China in 1997 under the promise that the city would be able to keep its freedoms and autonomy. But recent protests by pro-democracy -democ activists have brought this issue under a microscope. China had warned that relations could be risked if the UK parliamentary inquiry launched back in July. July continues. The head of the U.S. National Public Health Agency now warns the Ebola epidemic is spiraling out of control, with infection numbers rising and rising fast. There is a window of opportunity to tamp this down, but that window is closing. We need action now to scale up the response. Tom Frieden went on to say the answer to this outbreak came down to three things resources, technical experts in healthcare and management, and a global coordinated and unified approach. As the number of Ebola deaths ticks past 1,500, a dispirited Doctors Without Borders, the group spearheading medical efforts in West Africa, says the battle against the hemorrhagic virus is being lost, with treatment centers being reduced to places where people go to die alone. In Liberia, Area. Another U.S. doctor is said to have tested positive for Ebola. He has placed himself in isolation. And U.S. tech company Apple has confirmed that a number of celebrity accounts were targeted and compromised, but denied it was the result of a security breach on iCloud or Find My iPhone. Actress Jennifer Lawrence and actress or model Kate Upton were among the dozens of female celebrities whose private nude photos were hacked and uploaded onto a website, triggering a vast security concern. Apple said that its engineers believe the hacker likely used usernames, passwords, and security questions to gain access to those accounts. Get connected to Korea and the world. Join us every weekday for the latest developments out of Korea, Asia, and beyond. On air, on your mobile, and online, we lead the way every day at Young News. To try and resolve the crisis in Ukraine, the European Union also offers 50 billion. 
Now back to domestic news and round two of President Park Geun-hye's regulatory reform meeting kicks off this Wednesday at the presidential office of Chong Wade. President Park and related ministers will review the progress made from their first meeting and listen to suggestions from all levels of society. The ministers will also present plans for tackling specific industries like the internet economy and city construction to stimulate the economy. This second meeting was scheduled for last month but was delayed after President Park urged the ministries to address the outdated regulations pointed out at the first meeting in March before holding discussions. Now, despite the deadlock of the National Assembly over the contested Selho Ferry Bill, the government and the ruling Senuri Party have tentatively agreed to increase next year's budget by 5%. That would put the budget at around 370 billion US dollars, which is lower than the 6% increase government ministries and agencies had requested, and far below the 10% spike analysts had been expecting when the new economic team rolled out its stimulus measures in July. Welfare programs stand to see the biggest budget increase, accounting for more than 30% of the total budget for the first time ever. The government and the ruling party plan on finalising the budget by the end of next month before putting it up for legislative approval. Korea is putting the brakes on its push towards an emission-free auto market amid mounting pressure from local and global automakers. The government said Tuesday that it will delay carrying out its scheme to cut carbon emissions uh, by five years, pushing it back till the end of 2020. Finance Minister Che Kyung hwan said the plan places too much of a burden on automakers and car buyers while having little impact on reducing carbon emissions. The system would charge consumers who purchase vehicles with high carbon emissions while giving incentives to those who buy eco-friendly models. But the government says it's still carrying out an emission trading system starting next year and also expanding subsidies for hybrid and electric cars. Korea's foreign exchange reserves fell for the first time in more than a year last month. The Bank of Korea said on Wednesday that the country's foreign reserves came in at 367.5 billion US dollars as of the end of August, falling by almost 500 million dollars from the previous month. Foreign exchange reserves had risen since last July, hitting a record high but dropped as the euro and the British pound both weakened by over 1.5% against the greenback in August. Now, the days of going into a bank for simple financial transactions are pretty much behind us now. Rather, the vast majority of us use ATMs for deposits and withdrawals and our PCs or smartphones even to transfer money. These habits, combined with the banking sector's efforts to boost their profits have uh, prompted banks to unfortunately shut scores of their branches. Our Song Jisun reports. One out of every 20 bank branches have closed down over the past year. As of the end of July, the total number of bank branches in Korea stood at just over 5,100, down 5% from a year earlier. That's the biggest decrease in 17 years. The 1997 Asian financial crisis that folded five small-sized banks and shuttered nearly 1,000 branches triggered a chain of murders among Korean banks. The move was followed by major restructuring that closed down more branches, and internet banking and automation have further reduced their number. Only 11 percent of all money transfers were made through counters at the bank branches, with the rest handled through computers, smartphones, ATMs, or telephones. Leading the trend are people in their 20s and 30s, many of whom say they only visit the bank when they need help with online banking. I go to banks once every three months or so, only to get a new authentication card, but I use mobile banking almost every day. There's no need to carry much cash around these days, and I can do money transfers instantly on my smartphone. Such changes led to a reduction in workforce in the industry. Major banks in Korea such as KB, Shinhan, Hana, Korea Exchange, Standard Chartered and Citibank reduced their workforce by an average of 3 percent last year. The umbrella group of banking labor unions has called for a one-day strike on Wednesday by bank employees to back their demand of ensuring employment. Song ji Arirang News. Now, Korea's top three entertainment agencies scored big in the first half of this year as they diversified their business markets and they were targeting the East Asian market. JYP's 
uh, sales in the first six months of this year soared the most, his entertainment company that is, jumping nearly threefold on year, followed by YG Entertainment at 28% and SM Entertainment at 20%. JYP Entertainment saw its first surplus in three years from strong sales in the Japanese market. And YG, which boasts global acts like Psy and Big Bang, uh, cashed in big on concert ticket sales in Japan. SM Entertainment, uh, who have uh, Girls' Generation, continue to do well in its strong hold countries like China and Hong Kong. Now in health news, local researchers say they've found the key to cause uh, why cancer spread. And this is raising the chances and hopes, of course, of many of uh, beating this disease that touches so awfully so many people. Al Kiminji reports. About 17,000 people are diagnosed with lung cancer in Korea. Every year, 80% of them are fatal cases. Cancer cells travel through blood vessels and spread to other organs of the body, making it difficult to treat, especially among lung cancer patients. Even if the patient receives an operation, there are cases where they fail to recover because of the spread. The patient needs to receive treatment that does not allow the cancer to spread. Korean researchers for the first time have found two key substances that are involved in the spread of cancer to other organs. A particular protein that controls cell growth and an enzyme that produces active oxygen. The researchers say these proteins and enzymes cause changes in cancer cells, making them multiply in number and causing them to spread. We found that changes that occur in complex 1 or P21 has an effect on the spread of cancer in patients. We hope to carry out strategic treatment that will be able to control the spread. On average, 66 percent of all cancer patients are able to survive five more years. However, if the cancer spreads, the figure drops to 18 percent. But effective control of the protein and enzyme identified by the researchers is expected to raise the survival rate of cancer patients significantly. Kim min Arirang News. Now, in some high culture news, Korea's rapid development of ballet culture has benefited from an open exchange program. Our Im Yoon Hee takes us to one such program taking place called K-Ballet World. And this is currently taking place in Seoul's quintessential theatre district of Daehangno. Ballet is one of the world's most recognized forms of dance, celebrated for its beauty, its grace, and its capacity for the exquisite. Anything from the classical to the contemporary, it's time once again for the K-Ballet World Annual Gathering of ballet students and dancers from some of Korea's top ballet troops, as well as from around the world. Through this relationship with foreign countries, we can develop the culture of Korean ballet. It's also a great opportunity for choreographers to stage their works to a wide audience, including those abroad, as this year's theme is Korean ballet to the world and world ballet to Korea. The ballet extravaganza was established specifically for the development of Korean ballet through exchanges with companies around the globe. And it's through these relationships and networks that have enabled Korean dancers to excel in both the classical and modern forms of ballet. Dancer Seo dok has a family history of ballet in Korea, but he himself went abroad to learn the techniques used around the world. And as a result, he now has a better understanding of the similarities as well as the differences between ballet cultures, a knowledge he can use to strengthen his own career. Especially in Asia, they are more technical people. They are more kind of speedy and more active. They do like bah, this kind of stuff. In Europe, they are more details, slow and more emotional. They speak like this slow and more emotional and this kind of stuff so well, I prefer Europe because this is my style but well it depends of the people as with anything preference will always vary but one thing is undeniable and that is the fact that Korean ballet dancers have advanced through the art in just a short span of time demonstrating extreme technique and strength 
which has gained the Korean ballet culture recognition in the global community. Im Yoon Hee, Arirang News. And a good Wednesday morning to you all as we kick things off with the Korean national football team who is set to play a couple of friendlies in the month of September. And on Tuesday, the senior team got together to begin their training. The team still without a head coach will be led by interim head coach Shin Tae-yong and two other assistants. And as the players got together, a lot of question on how the team plans to change up their match compared to the Brazil World Cup. And with midfielder Lee chong Young being named as the captain of the national team, they'll be facing off against Venezuela this coming Friday, followed by Uruguay on the 8th. And speaking of the national team, let's move over to the men's national basketball team, who's currently competing at the 2014 FIBA World Cup in Spain. Now, with the team losing their first two games, they faced off against Slovenia, hoping to win their first game in the tournament. And once again, the three-point defense, a problem for the Korean national team as they give up 11 three-pointers in the game as Goran Dragic puts up game-high 22 points for Slovenia. Despite Korea taking the lead in the first quarter, a 30-point third by Slovenia gives them the win here, 89-72 as Korea drops their third straight game. And now moving over to domestic baseball where the Suwon KT Wiz, who's set to become the 10th KBO team next season, finished up their season in the Futures League. And not a bad start for a first-year team as they finished the 2014 Futures League season in third place as they placed themselves in top five in several categories such as wins, ERA, batting average, and home runs. Now as the team prepares to join the KBO next season as the 10th team, many fans wonder how this change will affect the league next season. And now finishing things off with Tuesday night's KBO action, we had the Tucson Bears and the Kia Tigers rain out in Gwangju as well as the LG Twins and the Nexon Heroes in Seoul. But the SK Wyverns and the Hanwha Eagles got their game in. However, the game ended tied 7-7 after a rain-shortened game. We want to take a look at the NC Dinos take on the Samsung Lions. And of course, going to the game here, second inning man on third, Ijo Nguk, RBI single, gives the NC Dinos the first run of the game. But not done yet, Lee Taewon, two run double to left field here, gives the NC Dinos the early 3-0 lead. But the Samsung Lions come alive, scoring twice in the fourth inning and four times in the fifth as they take a 6-3 lead. But check this out, NC Dinos end up tying the game 6-6 in the eighth before scoring four runs in the ninth to take a 10-6 lead. But holy cow, the Samsung Lions answer back with four runs of their own in the bottom of the ninth inning as the game gets called due to rain as well. 10-10, your final score. And that's going to wrap it up for me. This has been SJ. Have a great rest of the day and see you guys again for your sports needs. Rain in Seoul and its surrounding areas got much weaker, so it's raining lightly at the moment. But some parts of Gangwon-do province is receiving heavy downpours. So up to 80 millimeters of additional rain could be fall in some regions into tomorrow, and it could rain heavily in other regions at times. And if you've noticed, it's much cooler today. Rain and clouds drag down the temperatures quite a bit, about 4 to 5 degrees lower temperatures are expected across the nation. So let's take a closer look at those temperatures. The afternoon high in the capital will only rise to 22, while Daegu and Gwangju, Busan should all make it to 25 this afternoon. Now for other regions, it looks like Jeju Island and Daejeon will top out at 28 and 25, and Dokdo should see highs of 23 this afternoon. Now today's rainy, gloomy, and chilly weather conditions should turn to mostly sunny with warm temperatures tomorrow afternoon and we can expect to see a uh, delightful weather conditions throughout Chuseok holiday. Well, that's all for Korea and here's the international weather for viewers around the world.
Well, that's all we have for now. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday wherever you're watching us and stay tuned to Adi Dang TV. I'll be back with Arjun Ju for our next newscast coming up at noon Korea time. Until then, goodbye.